Hey everyone, in this video I wanted to show you my workflow for blueprints within UE4. I expect you to know some basics of how to use, or how to set up blueprints, and how to use UE4 before watching this. This isn't a tutorial in doing blueprints 101, this is actually a video of my workflow. And what I hope to hopefully teach here is my workflow, and if my workflow is useful to you, then you can adopt bits of it and bring it into your own. So this, once again, this isn't a traditional tutorial. This is me showing how I use blueprints. And the major thing that I do differently, a lot of people do do this, but a lot of people don't. And this is a common staple in programming and being a great problem solver is pseudocode. So I have a example here and I have another example here. We're going to take movement and we're also going to do the super hot time mechanic today. But we wanna start with movement. And for those who are unaware of pseudocode, a big part of my workflow. Pseudocode is when you use your spoken language, in my case, English, and you write down a solution to a problem in the most basic way you can to your understanding. In my scenario, I had movement. My problem was how can I move my character in Unreal? Or in this case, how can I move it in any engine? Because I have a basic, um, because I have an understanding of data types, and variables and programming I have it's not super technical but I have some technical programming terms such as variables um, vertical horizontal input and stuff like that now these aren't super technical terms but to someone who doesn't program you may not know these terms you want to write your pseudocode in a way that makes sense to you for example I have set up input for horizontal and vertical input which is W A S and D you might write check the keys W, A, S, or D. You might even have something um, simpler like check W, and then after that, move character five pixels up, whatever you have. In my case, I have set up the input. Um, I actually don't want this one, I'm gonna delete that. So set up the input, get a direction to move in based off horizontal or vertical input, and then move the character based on the horizontal or vertical input using the direction using the direction really simple but for me this is the easiest way that i can write down movement because i've done movement so many times unfortunately and i want to show you how i can use this information to help me in coming up with a solution uh, a blueprint solution so inside of blueprints and before I actually do that, we just need to go to our settings, project settings, input, and I just need to put in my axis mapping. So, as I mentioned before, horizontal and vertical. Oh, whoops, vertical. Horizontal, I have A, which I believe I want to have as a negative one. And then I have D which I can keep it was one. I have W and then I have S and I believe I want S to be negative one, but I can always come back if I'm incorrect. Now that I've set up my horizontal and vertical input, I can go back to blueprints and set it up in here. So let's have a quick look at this again. I set this up. Now I need to get a direction to move in. So I need to first, before I get a direction, I need to press the button down. In order to register, if I pressed it, I need to have an access event. With this access event, I can check if I pressed a button. Next thing that I mentioned is that I need to get a direction that I'm moving in. So let's see how I can do that. Let's get our, for horizontal, right vector, uh, get right vector because we want to move left or right depending on if we're pressing A or D. And we also need to get actor location. Oh, sorry. Um, get actor rotation, I should say. And then what we need to do is plug it into <clears throat> input movement. And add input movement requires a world direction, which is this, and a scale, 
value. Let's hit compile, save. And before we check out if it works, step one, I needed to create the vertical and horizontal movement um, input. Then this step here is checking input. This step here is getting the direction. And based off the scale value, I can either move left or right. If you read here, it says reverse the direction. So if I press D, I will move right. And on the same token, if I press A, which is negative one, I will move left. So let's try this out. And there we go, A and D movement. And we can do the exact same thing for vertical. Get right vector, oh, sorry, get forward vector. Get actor rotation. Make that our world direction and scale value. And now I have WASD movement. <clears throat> now, if you have never used blueprints before, all you have to do is with your pseudocode, Google, how do I set up input? Then you might go, so let's say I add an extra step, check if um, horizontal or vertical input is pressed. Then you might go, okay, how do I check this? So you might Google, how do I check for horizontal or vertical input? Or how can I check for W A, how can I check for a keyboard input? keyboard input pressed and then you would get a solution of Google thirdly how do I get a direction to move in you can Google that find an answer and then fourth how can I move the character once I have a direction now I said now I don't mean Google how do I move a character I mean figure out the solution and Google the steps along the way what you've done is you know the solution, you just need to translate that into code, or in our case, a blueprint. By doing pseudocode, you are allowing yourself to become a great problem solver. And by becoming a great problem solver, it doesn't matter what language you use, you just need to translate this into the code. And over time, you will learn what all the code means or what all the blueprints mean. Let's take our second example. Super hot time mechanic is because we've already got this input, we need to store the horizontal and vertical input axis as a float and check if the values have changed. So what, what we should really be doing here, what I mean by this, because it might be a bit technical, is when I press, this is basically has w um, store if w a, S, or D have been pressed. Second is check if they have been pressed. Thirdly, condition one, if the value, if they have not been pressed, slow down time. If they have been pressed, speed up time. That is what all this means. I just have a few more programming terms. And conditions is just if something is true or false. So what I can do now is comment this as movement input and store it inside of this comment. So I know that it's separate to everything else I'm doing. Now, if I go back to my pseudocode, I said I need to store the horizontal and vertical input as a float, so I just need to store it as a value, and the easiest way for me to do that, h axis and v axis is in a float. In order to store it, I need to set it, which I can do at the end, and what I can also do is grab this node and put it here grab that node and put it in there. So what I'm doing here is 
I'm storing whether I'm pressing A or D, negative 1, plus 1, or W, S, negative 1, plus 1. Next thing I can do is check if the values have changed. <coughs> so we need an event tick, which is update. And after we have this event tick, we need to check booleans. So what you could Google if you weren't sure of what the node is, is how do I check a condition? In this case, I know it's a branch and it asks for a condition and then it goes for a true or false. Before we do the condition, I know I need to change time. So let's say I don't know exactly what I'm doing. I might type in time and have a scroll through. I see something called time dilation, so set, set, set set global time dilation. You might click through and tra try a few of these things or just Google what they mean. If you Google what they mean, you'll eventually come to set time dilation, which I can use here, set time dilation. Now, the true statement, let's have a look. Condition one, if the values aren't changing, slow down time. If they are changing, time should go back to normal. So if if I am pressing W, A, S, or D, time should be 1. If not, time should be slow. Let's try something like one, 0 0.1. Compile, save. And here I need to check these floats here, which is get and get. And something really cool is the is not equal to float and the is not equal to float. So all I'm saying here with some basic mathematical operators is if these axes are not equal to zero, which means they are being pressed, which I can check in here. So what I can do in here is use the or Boolean. So if this condition or this condition is true or false, which I'll chuck into here, do one of these. If, if the h-axis or v-axis is negative 1 or plus 1, that means they're being pressed, which means time should be 1. If they're not being pressed, which is 0, which is false, time should be 0 0.1. Let's see if this worked. So I'm going to move back. And you notice time speeds up when I move. So we have the super hot mechanics in play. Let's really clarify this a few things and we'll just drag the stage out and build the lighting <coughs> it shouldn't take much time at all okay uh, let's bring this back so remember when I press W A S or D time should speed up and for the sake of this demonstration, let's just make it 0 0.6. Hit play. That's awesome. And maybe we can make this a bit slower. So it's really slow. Move, speeds up, move, speeds up. So now we have some really cool super hot gameplay in a ver relatively short amount of time. And the thing that really helped was having this pseudocode available. So by having this pseudocode available and these two examples I wrote, I could easily make movement and easily make the super hot time mechanic. The other advantage I have is that I understood beforehand what these nodes did. But if you don't understand what the nodes do, you could simply Google them and figure out the solutions. So my, what I am hopefully trying to get across here is pseudocode first, then go into your blueprints and try and develop the solution. If you're unsure of what a node does or how to do something, such as how do I check for a condition, how do I check every frame, then you can Google that and you'll find out that the event tick node exists. Then you might Google, how do I check a condition 
you might figure out that the branch node exists. How do I set time? You might figure out this node exists. How do I move the character? You might learn that this node exists. Once you can pseudocode and solve any problem, all you have to do is learn what the nodes do, and then you can make anything in the world. That's re it's really that simple. And the more complex the issue, the better and more important pseudocode is. This is a trivial, trivial problem for me to solve, movement. So the better you get, and the more experience you have, you don't need to pseudocode these things. What I definitely want to pseudocode is if I was to make something like an inventory. An inventory can be a very complex system, right? Let's see example four. Let's say I was going to make a um, lobby for a multiplayer game. I really want to pseudocode that and plan it out. So in the end, I hope this was useful and as a bonus challenge, I want you to try and make this yourself. And I'll be super impressed if you can, especially if you're if you're a beginner. Um, what I want you to do is get mouse input to look around. So when I move the mouse around, you should be able to look left, right, up and down. And what I want you to do is pseudocode the steps and then create it yourself. If you're new to Blueprints, hopefully you can pseudocode and figure out how to do a movement system. If you're experienced in Blueprints, but you haven't come from a programming background, hopefully pseudocoding is something that you can use in the future. I hope you all enjoyed this video and got something useful out of it. And I will see you in the next video. And very shortly, I have a very exciting announcement to make about the game that I've been working on. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.